We can't show you a sample of nickel carbonyl because it's very dangerous and it's nearly 40 years since we've ever had any in our lab. But we have got a photo that I took at the time and you can see it's a colourless liquid. In fact, in the photo, it's next to cyclopentadienyl nickel nitrosyl, a really dangerous compound, which I've talked about on another video, how I dropped it on the floor. But we did do one very nice experiment with nickel carbonyl, where we dissolved nickel carbonyl in liquid krypton. That was really quite exciting. And used the liquid krypton as a solvent and did a chemical reaction where we shone light, UV light, removed one of the carbon monoxide molecules and replaced it with nitrogen. And by doing quite a lot of complicated experiments, we could measure the strength of the nickel-nitrogen bond, which nobody had ever done before. This is really the only major piece of work that I've been involved with, with nickel. Chemists use solid nickel as a catalyst for putting hydrogen onto molecules. And when they do this, the hydrogen is dissociated, so the HH bond is broken. A lot of organisms and bacteria use enzymes which contain a mixture of iron and nickel, iron atoms and nickel atoms bonded together to dissociate hydrogen or alternatively to take two hydrogen ions, H+, and turn them into hydrogen by adding electrons. And the interesting thing is that this is quite a large molecule with proteins, but in the middle is this iron-nickel cluster and what chemists have found really surprising is that the iron has both cyanide and carbon monoxide bonded to the iron. And the reason this is surprising is because cyanide is enormously poisonous to a vast number of different sorts of organisms and carbon monoxide is also poisonous. So to find them together in a naturally occurring enzyme has caused a lot of excitement and people are still studying these enzymes to try and understand how they work. In principle, you could use enzymes like that to turn acids into hydrogen for powering cars and all sorts of other processes. So the really important point about these hydrogenase enzymes is that although the iron has the exotic groups it's actually the nickel that does the chemistry. The hydrogen bonds to the nickel and that's where the chemistry takes place. The iron in this case is in a sort of good supporting role but it's the nickel where the action is. A hundred years ago most of the steel that people had rusted very easily. Alloys that contain nickel, not all of them but specific alloys, don't rust at all, so-called stainless steel, and stay polished forever. Now there are many, many grades, but the, initially the stainless steel first discovered contained nickel. Nickel is now used in all sorts of areas, in magnets, where nickel magnets are medium strength. They're not as strong as some using rare earths, but they're still very strong. They're also used in a whole range of different battery technologies. You've probably seen rechargeable nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydride batteries, all of these contain nickel in some proportion in one of the electrodes. Most coins are based or used to be based on alloys of copper and nickel and depending on the proportion they can look silver or they can look copper coloured. There are a few countries I think that have issued pure nickel coins. There was at least one that was issued in the Netherlands. The problem is nowadays the price of copper has gone up so much that many coins are now made from steel with just a small plating of copper on the top. I think the American five cent piece was called the nickel because they contained nickel but I'm not absolutely sure but I'm sure many viewers will correct me and it's good when the professor's wrong sometimes. 
Hi everyone, thanks for watching. You're actually on the Nottingham Science Channel. This is where I put extra footage from periodic videos and 60 symbols and other science stuff as well sometimes. So if you found your way here from periodic videos and you're not subscribed, maybe you consider doing that. Cheers.